The Oakland Zoo was once one of the hottest tickets in Pittsburgh, a rowdy student section boasting a who's who of the city's elite. Today, this zoo has run amok and is an abandoned shanty town. Look at these record low attendance numbers. They scream for help. Watching a team fall apart is hard. That's why SeatGeek helps you save money on tickets. It scours all tickets for sale on the web and grades them on a 1 to 100 scale from red to green. You can even see where you'll be sitting as Pitt gets embarrassed at home yet again. Don't want to break the bank? Use the code word TREE in the link below and get $20 off of your first purchase. Don't spend full price to watch college basketball. Utilize the power of SeatGeek the next time you buy tickets. I've always had a morbid fascination with teams hitting rock bottom, not just in mockery, but to see what caused their downfall. What were the pieces that created this puzzle of misery? In a way, this is the autopsy and we are the coroners identifying the cause of death. Today's specimen hails from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The University of Pittsburgh has had some rather rough luck with its sports teams as of late. Their men's basketball team in particular is the point of focus. Back in the last decade, they were one of the most potent teams in a physical competitive Big East, consistently near the top, and consistently choking and underachieving in March. Nowadays, they can only wish for such failure. Pitt is now a scene of disaster. You thought you saw Rock Bottom try an 0-19 stretch in ACC conference play. Think a loss to Montana and barely beating goddamn High Point for an 8-24 record. The untrained eye would immediately point the finger at Kevin Stallings. Not exactly the case. This terrible season has been years in the making. A brief disclaimer, I have the misfortune of being a Pitt fan, since I had family that went there for college. It's in times like these when I wish I wasn't a total idiot when I was seven. Back on topic, to really understand where the downward spiral began, you have to go back to when they were still in the Big East. Or should I say left the Big East for the ACC? One of the side effects of trying to bolster the football program's prestige and gain more revenue streams was in the basketball program. The issue with Pitt going to the ACC wasn't in the style of play more than it castrated their recruiting pipelines. A lot of the old recruits that Pitt got were usually from places like Philly or New York. You could always sell them on playing in front of family at Madison Square Garden. That was their main calling card for years. In the ACC, they have no such advantage. Pittsburgh also isn't exactly the most fertile ground for basketball prospects either. This sort of thing simply made recruiting tougher. Not to say that was the only reason, not at all. A major factor in all of this was Jamie Dixon himself. Pitt has a lot to credit Dixon for, the culture he brought to the team, the emphasis on defense, stability, and relevance. But by the end, Dixon was doing nothing more than punting the ball into the bleachers. He all but gave up on the program by the end. A steady downward spiral was already beginning by the time he resigned and went back to his alma mater in TCU. Recruiting fell apart or whiffed because, remember, they lost their main selling card to their pipeline. It was for the best for both sides if Dixon left, so I'm not bitter at that, but they had to all but start from scratch. It was critical they succeeded in their coaching search, there were no other options. Pitt was a program losing a lot of its luster and they needed a home run hire to excite the fans and potential recruits. Athletic director Scott Barnes went in with a game plan and he botched the shit out of it. They went after Sean and Archie Miller, who declined to come. Like, why the hell would Sean Miller take the job? Archie maybe, but even he has greener pastures to go to. After that, it felt like Barnes all but threw his hands in the air and settled on the 45-year-old chain smoker at the end of the bar. They hire Kevin Stallings, one of the most uninspired hires I have ever seen out of a sports program. It's not like this guy was anything special. He was a decent coach, but he did nothing of note at Vanderbilt. In fact, the guy was on the brink of being fired from there when he took the job. He was college malarkey. Fan reaction was unsurprisingly tepid. That tepidity translated into a disastrous campaign in his first year where the players talked metric tons of shit and underachieved dramatically on the court. The downward spiral turned into an endless freefall. The offseason, more turn Turmoil. Pitt was full of seniors, malcontents, or players that fled the shit show. There was also that embarrassing Cam Johnson debacle, which they refused to let him transfer for a bit because, well, Pitt. Thus you get over half a team that are either freshmen or Juco transfers. If you haven't noticed, Pitt isn't exactly Kentucky in getting the creme de la creme of recruits. Thus leads us to a Pitt basketball squad all but dead on arrival. As I had mentioned, Kevin Stallings isn't purely at fault for this, but that's not to say he's completely innocent. The guy was hailed as this offensive guru, yet he has this band of greenhorns doing nothing but chucking threes. 
The key to having a young team is to see some semblance of improvement, yet we've seen nothing that points to the sort. Even in their last game of the season, shoot threes. These aren't the goddamn Warriors, they'd be lucky to shoot 35% from three. Sports radio around here kept trying to say how hard they played, but it wasn't like most games were competitive. They were getting blown out of the water repeatedly. Don't tell me they would have done better with Ryan Luther. They would have won like one conference game. Two tops. He's not LeBron. Stop it. Coach K couldn't have made this team much better than it was. They were fucked from the get-go. Even as they lie dead, Pitt is in a totally dire situation. The Pitt faithful demanded blood for this incompetence and gave Kevin Stallings the Louis XVI treatment. Now we get rewarded with yet another coaching search and a multi-million dollar golden parachute for Stallings. Not a bad chunk of change for an abysmal performance. Thanks, Mr. Barnes, for this awful hire and disastrous reign that should have never happened. Even if Pitt got their pound of flesh, the people who you should really be mad at are long gone. Scott Barnes fucked off to Oregon State to probably ruin their program as well. Jamie Dixon is thriving at his alma mater, back to where he can emphasize his strengths as a coach. Why didn't I become an insufferable Penn State fan like everyone else around here? The switch, Knight. Back it goes, Wade, jump stop. Control, great selection, and a kiss that could go down in 